Welcome to NRL 360 Rugby League from every angle. Brought to you by NIB. Joining me again, the great Paul Kent. Let's bring the journalists straight in. Brett Reid and Dave Riccio. But tonight's Telstra top story. Zach Lomax has been granted permission to leave the Dragons at the end of the season, despite having two years remaining on, on his contract. Lomax is now free to negotiate with rival clubs for 2025. However, the Dragons are open to an immediate player swap for this season if the right player was offered in return. So big news today, Kenty, for the Dragons uh, and also Lomax. Yeah, look, it's a positive for Zach Lomax. He's obviously made his in intentions known fairly early in the season that he wasn't happy playing wing and was seeking a release. Look, I know a lot of fans aren't uh, fans of, of these sorts of things happening. Fact is, though, the contracts are there to basically keep both sides of the party honest um, and that's what they've done. They've come to an agreement. So good luck to me. Find some. I, I doubt very much I'll find someone this year. Mm. Uh, but that's, the opportunity's there. Why are they willing to let him go already? Uh, well, it's obviously been simmering for a while now, Braith, and he's been unhappy for a while now. I mean, we've reported this story in the pre-season that he was uh, edgy about that move to, to the wing. And I think they've just decided, look, it's a lot of money to pay a winger. He's on $800,000 a year. Mm. Um, it's probably not great for their salary cap. And if they can find another home for him and use that mon money to fix up other areas of the team, and there are other areas of that team that need fixing, it's a better investment. I think the timing is what would jar a little bit with Saints fans, guys. You know, here we are a month into the footy season and suddenly the club declares that they're re willing to release one of their biggest names. But I think it's a huge, hugely smart move by Saints because <clears throat> no, longer, no longer for the remainder of this season are they being held to ransom or with a noose around their neck as far as this $800,000 salary being with them the whole year. So they get to October and suddenly they've missed out on a whole stack of players that have popped up in between. And I'll give you a name, Sunia Taruva over at the Panthers mm. who the Saints are keen to have a chat with. They wouldn't even be able to probably get to that conversation with, with an armful of cash mm. like they are now yeah. in October. The other if thing they that, wait that long. The thing that I wonder about though is how much is this about a player just not, be, not happy playing a position? Because... Most of us have played. Candy, right? Well, I think I, there's been talk about how Zach much, being a little. Yeah, and how much is it? Now, how right? much is it a, uh, an opportunity for a player to get out and get to a stronger yeah. club, which is. I think the, I think the like position do, is a bit it? of a convenient it, excuse. It's right? a convenient I mean, I think, excuse to get yeah. out of the club. I, 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 we're, we're a bottom four team. Yeah. We're battling. We're going to take some years to get back to serious contender status. So why not take the quick route now and just join another club? Which goes to the whole loyalty argument, which we don't, you know, we have here for <laughs> the time. I'm with David. It's smart that they've made the decision yeah, now. It has, yeah, gives yeah. them all year to go and find a new. It gives him time to find a new home and negotiate a new home. And I think he's. I think that's well done. But it gives the dragons. Gives the dragons. Gives time. dragons. Absolutely. They don't have the noose of saying, "Well, is he yeah. going to be here holding mm. on to him, finally losing him anyway?" Yeah. And they've lost the opportunity. It gives to them buy. clarity, uh, but. You also, he's playing good footy, by the way. But you, yeah. you also don't want him leaving any time soon, disrupting this season, right? So Kenny doesn't believe he'll leave before the end of the year, but he's still a chance of that, right? I, I don't think he will either, Braith, simply because they've come out today and said we want, want a player of a, a high standard. And I just think the clubs he's looking at, potentially looking at, yeah. Parramatta, Parramatta's the obvious one. You know, the guys of that standard, we're talking Re, Re, Regan Campbell, Gillard, Junior Paulo, those sort of guys, Mitch... Dylan Brown, they're not going to let those guys go. Mm. So I think it's unrealistic to think they're going to get a deal like that in the mm. short term. Do you agree? I agree. I don't see Zach leaving uh, immediately or this season. Mm. I think it gets through the end of the year. And the, the strength of that will be with the, will be the mental approach of Zach Lomax to, to fi finish this season, as we've seen mm. from players in the past, certainly over the last couple of years, Stephen Crichton. Uh, plenty of the Panthers players yeah. have gone and moved on. And I'll be interested to see how Zach handles it. Play for this though now, Dave. He'll be playing hard. Don't worry. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. He's got, he's putting he's, himself he's in the shop for, window. Well, he's yeah. Playing, well, yeah. He's playing That's for true. a new contract. He's not gonna. He's not gonna try and just sort of coast through the season and just mail in his performance to mm. try and get through the year. He's, he's playing for money. And look, he's on eight hundred. What's going to be interesting is if a rival club comes in and says, "Mate, we'll take you, but we'll give you six hundred because I'm sure this deal from the Dragons is we're not going to supplement." Mm. Kenny, you don't think behind the scenes they've been feeling out people to, to know have. what he's going to get. I'm yeah. sure he's not doing this without knowing I'm going to get a pretty good whack. You talk about up. filling out people. Who may those people be? What clubs are, 
Is he looking at well, who's, who's the most likely? Well, Perra's the obvious one. I mean, they've, they've expressed their interest in him from the start. In fact, to the point where um, Mark O'Neill rang Ryan Webb this morning before this was announced and said, we're coming through the front door, we want to talk to him. Uh, and Ryan said, look, wait till we're making an announcement later today. We'll mm. talk about it then. And they're trying to organise a meeting with Brad, Arthur mm. and Zach this week at some point. So that's, it feels to me like that's reasonably well advanced. That, not, that interest is well known. Uh, his, no, his camp know well, about there's it. There's not allowed to be well advanced interest in at the moment. Well, you Not you before can, today. Can, are, we, are we going back to the rules? Are we going back to the rules? Are we going well, back to the rules? Are we Rules are rules, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but they'd made, they'd gone to, they went to the Dragons a while ago and said, yeah. look, can we speak to Zach? So yeah. Zach knew it was there. The Dragons right? said no. The Dragons said yeah. no. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Well, they're cheeky. I think if you actually start to go through the clubs, and I think Kenny's on the money. I think Zach Lomax is going to have to take a pay cut for his next gig. Because if you go through the, the, the NRL, the amount of suitors that would be after him, I think mm. qu- it's quite thin. The other thing too, and I've said this earlier in the season, was when Lomax sat down with Flanagan, Flanagan, in a bit to sort of put a bit of a fire under him and get him going, took him through the performance of all the setters in the competition and showed where he ranked, and he wasn't in the top 20. Mm. So other clubs will be aware of that. Look, certainly he's a quality player, mm. but certainly he's also a player whose potential was celebrated right from the beginning, yep. but he's still to get there. He's still to get to become that player that at, at 19 everybody thought he was going to be. Yep. So that, he's, got a, he's, got a, he's got, what, 20 rounds now, 22 rounds, whatever to go, to try and get up and show people now that he can actually be that player and actually be worth the money because he is going to go into a market now. The fact he's leaving a club, there's no loyalty, such to speak, so to speak, for Saints who are paying on potential. So the new club he's going to go to are going to be a club that's mm. going to put real figures towards it mm. and just say, like, this is what we think you're worth. Obviously, the negotiation will go on around mm. that, but that doesn't necessarily turn out to be 800000 I, I think also uh, centres these days aren't as highly valued as... So the least value position exactly, in the, in full the backs, backs, halves. Right. Yep. You look at the game at the moment, we, a lot of teams need halves, a lot of teams need front rowers, a lot of teams looking for the full back or number nine. Centres, there's a lot of really good centres wingers. in the game, but they're not as... as Oh, as influential wingers, as they used to be. Wingers are more valuable given the Definitely. fact that one, they're the finisher in the, with the acrobatic put-downs in the bring, quarter. And they start the set. And they start the yep. set at the yeah. other end off the kick So return. he should have stayed on the wing. No. Senders get paid more money than wingers, though. Senders yeah. in the game get paid more money than wingers. Katani mm. Staggs, uh, Steve Crichton, Zach Lomax. Mm. They get paid more than the wingers. The wingers might be more valuable, the centers earn more money. It's very interesting. But what's undeniable is that Zach Lomax has played his best football, we be, I believe, yeah, in seasons wing. on the wing. Mm. Yeah. He's put together, you know, uh, top run metres above any other Dragons player in, 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 the, in, the, in the first month of footy. Uh, he, the coach has been giving him the yeah. Man of the Match awards. But remember, mm. he's playing for contract too. Yes, yes. Which is what Kenny yep. referenced before. Now, what about the Dragons? They free up a war chest here. They've got some, some dollars. <laughs> Who are they going to go for? Yeah, I think there's key. I think there's a couple of key positions that they're certainly chasing, and one's a front rower. Well, and they showed their cards by going hard at Adam <coughs> Fennell Blake um, mm. over the summer. And I think a, a, a middle forward. If you look at Shane Flanagan's greatest success uh, as a coach, it's been when he's got that, a strong pack. Mm. And and it, look, it's no secret across the game, everyone needs a strong pack. But Saints are devoid of that. Nelson, Nelson Asifa Solomon, wasn't Couldn't he? Even, didn't even crack the top. The Top 22 this week again, bro. Yeah, I know. Circle what week. is going on? Circle because week, he can't so. get a start in Melbourne. Rumours he was going to the Dragons. Is that is that is there any truth to well, that? Well, I think or? there was talk about a swap deal, but I don't I don't think Melbourne have any interest in a swap deal with Zach okay. Lomax because they're loaded in the backs. They've got a lot of money spent in the backs. If they lose Nelson, they need to reinforce the middle of the field. I think we all know. What's that's, happened to him? Well, I just don't think they're happy with the way he returned the preseason, bro. I don't think they were overly well, happy with him last he came year back heavy, and the way he's come back. And fitness. Craig was a bit. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think Craig was happy with his fitness last year and his weight last year. I think he's come back, back in the off-season. He was told to lose weight. He was told yeah. to lose weight in the off-season. He came back heavier. As well. he, he must be struggling because they need him. Like, yeah. if you look at Melbourne and their pack, they need size, they need power. They need forwards. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, but what we do know about Craig Bellamy, Craig Bellamy's not going to sit there and indulge a player. And second, what he's not going to do, he's not going to lower his standards totally. to say, you know what, I do need you. I, I do need mm. you, but this is the standard I've set. Craig Bellamy's one of the few coaches in the competition that will not waver on what his standard mm. is 
I love that. If the team needs, even if the team needs, and no matter how desperate the team needs, that's the the point. That's why they've been the best for twenty years. Exactly. Going to go over that. It it speaks volumes, probably, of where he's at then, Nelson. If if that, you know, if they are the standards and he can't reach them, and they're willing to let go of a player that's been there for a long period of time, he's had a really big impact on the club. So I don't think it's quite at that point yet, Pray, but it's getting there. It's getting close. I think. I think the concern would be. That uh, I think it'll be a stack of footy clubs really keen to have a big, powerful man like Nelson and Sofa Solomon in your front row. But with that comes a trepidation on why is the Melbourne Storm letting him go? Yeah. And then that. Well, he's been so crucial. And, you so, and, then, and then footy clubs start to balk at that. It's, it's renowned throughout the game. He won't, buying have, he, won't, he won't have a problem, though. No, but buy, <laughs> buying, they'll be lining up. They'll buying lining a Storm up. discard mm. always comes with a little bit of. Uncertainty yeah. from rival well, clubs. Very few of them repeat the performance. It's true. Very few players leave Melbourne yep. and are as good at where they go as where they were as what they were at Melbourne. 